Okay guys, I'm gonna do a quick scalp on oil. And a warm welcome to one and all. And for those of you who have not seen me before, my name is Langers, and I am the overgrown child that is the Scruffy Trader. And I'm going to very quickly just jump onto the screens because I'm a little bit late coming to the camera because I finished talking with the guys on the squad there. And it's coming into play. Uh, so I'll just flick this over so you can see what it is I'm looking at. Um, I'm just going to do a quick scalp on this because I'm not expecting massives out of it at the moment. Uh, reason being, as normal, I've been opening my gob. There it is there. Um, it's just coming on to just after 12 when I did that and I put up trade idea for oil. Uh, there you go. Uh, 20 to 12 reason being why I'm showing you that is it's all well and good showing you a trade after the event it's a little bit harder to predict it uh, prior so that's what I do for the guys I whatever it is I'm looking at I'll do a quick little video Show them the reasons exactly why I'm getting into it, and then a trade. So what am I looking at here? Well, if you saw yesterday's video, you um, as a as a quick update, there we are. I was in a swing trade, which was the CAD. That is there. Uh, got out of that quite nicely, and I also mentioned that I'd be trading the DAX, and I did reasonably well on that as well. Although I did get a bit of a punch in the nose at the start because I got it wrong um, didn't get the direction wrong but I just got my entry wrong I got in a little bit too early and I had to kill it off and then sort of come back to it anyway let us have a little look at this why am I interested and what is attractive about it well look at that drive that's a beauty it had no retracement on it at all. So that's the first thing that's running through my mind. Let's just take this out a little bit further though. Let's build this all up. We have a clear uptrend on this leg. Yes, you could say that's pushing down. But if we just drop a little trend line on it from sort of from there through, that is still a steep angle on the movement up. And as you can see, it is being respected because just taking that from there to there looking back in history it's tagged it there and it's followed that i'm not a lover of trend lines but all it's telling me is is that the pressure is up that's all i wanted to see with that you can do the same thing with a moving average to be honest so it's telling me it's respecting the areas that it has done in the past echoes of the past telling you what the future is right. drop it down to four hour what's happened amazing drop but it's like a range if you look at it that that's quite range bound so you could draw a level there and if you look at it and you come back this far let's tighten that up so you can see just a touch if i go and draw a level in there well, what do you know it's bouncing on a key level because it's done it before there and there simple stuff it's gone away it's come back down with some gusto because all of that energy's ran out but that is still kind of range bound that's the way i that's my take on it anyway so i think there's good room to the upside well how far will it go well again let's just drop a level in just move that up well, there's a cluster point it's clustered there before so they're the two most recent simple there's an entry point there so we're now caging the price over and over just there simple simple stuff 
So I've now got a trading arena from here to here. Nice and easy. Move this down to one hour. And what do we see? We have a good range up to there. So if I'm only wanting a few ticks from there to there, I think looking at this, there's a good opportunity for it. All right. Move it down to a 15 minute so we can see exactly what's going on. Well, the pressure's starting to accelerate. You can see that. Take it into a five. And what we're going to do, well, I'm going to count the candles back. One, two, three. There's no point candle counting because we're at the top of the range. So that would have been where it was coming in. So if I put my order there, two orders in, as always. Now, oil can move. It really can. So to get your 15 ticks out of one and maybe he's 20, 30 out of the next, isn't that difficult. So what we're going to do is we're going to push that up there slightly. Uh, just to that cluster point there. That'll do. All right. Now what I am going to do with this as well is I'm going to follow that down back to this line. So I'm going to leave the orders there. Every time it closes, I'll move it down. And that's what you'll see uh, in the speedy up bit. It's very quick. I, I just needed to get into it. I'm a little bit busy with screens here. Uh, so I'll let this play out. Uh, if it ends, great. I'll have a bit chat. But if not, when I get home tonight, I'll have a little summary. Because... I kind of want to have a little chat about whether you go with the trend or whether you counter trend. Uh, I think it's quite an important subject and it's something where a lot of people get it wrong. Um, so let me play the trade out, see if I can get my salary out of it. And then I'll come back to you and we'll talk trends and counter trends. My friends is that so let's see what that's produced today ding dang do I can live with that so let me have a little chat about trend or counter trend let's jump on the other camera and we'll find out well, we're waiting. okay guys so I've had a a pretty darn good day on oil as you've just seen and called out very early this morning and I just want to follow it up with one of the questions one of the guys had asked within the group and they're talking about trends and counter trends etc and I thought I'd just put my two penneth in for a couple of minutes just to whoop, talk about a couple of minutes that's very kind of you that's very nice what are you after why have you got an offer oh wouldn't you like to know <coughs> Okay, well, the mind's an amazing organ. I've got an amazing organ. It's capable of far more than you'd imagine. Right again. Um, it's very good, I've got my coffee. Because we all know Scruffy likes a coffee. Anyway, sorry. Um, yes, two penneths about trends and counter trend. Now, for me, I think there's two disciplines. 
you have day trading and swing trading. Well, you can actually expand that in, into four. Scalping, day trading, swing trading, and position trading. But for the purpose of this, it's two, day and swing. Now, if I'm day trading, I am what's called market neutral. It means the product that I pick can go either way. I'm not bothered whether I'm gonna go long or short, and I really don't care what the, over, the, the long term trend is. Okay, ne nearly tied my words up there. Having a little bit of think about what Winky might want. She wants me, poor bitch. <sighs> it's the end of the month, isn't it? That means the credit card's due. <sighs> yes, Finny, little salute to you because we did discuss it uh, earlier on, joking at each other. Winky's is colossal. <laughs> You're taller than I imagined. I'm bigger in every department. Oh, that's disgusting. Anyway, but if I'm swing trading, I do go with the dominant trend. And I'll kind of try and explain a little bit as to why. Now, if you've ever seen my sheet and I have a heat map on a morning, uh, this one, you'll see down in the, the sort of left-hand side, there is color coded and it's in blue and mauve and then it has one hour and four hour the reason they're there for is based off the ATR now I truly believe the ATR so we'll just put that there is something you need to look at when you're trading and it doesn't matter what instrument you're trading that is a great filter but it doesn't help you with direction, but it can help you pick what you're looking at. You see, when I'm talking market neutral and dominant trend, if something has a big ATR, um, and I'll use cable as an example, because its ATR is 90 to 100 most days, and I can grab 10, 20 pips out of that relatively easy. Whereas something like uh, Euro New Zealand, which we're looking at today, only has an ATR of about 35. So to grab 10 pips out of that is very difficult. So you're best off going with the longer trend. And I'll, I'll kind of show you as to why. If you can imagine cable has gone up, it's pulled back, it's gone up, it's pulled back, and it's now there, this point. Just visually looking at that, you'll go, that's up. Excellent. But what about day trading? You know, the long term is definitely up. And if you're swing trading, because you're looking to go over a number of days, that is the way you want to go. But what about today? Well, the ATR works like this. So if we can imagine that as an ATR of 100, at the start of the candle, it can go 100 up to there, 100 that way, but it can also go 100 that way. All right. Because what an ATR does is it measures the average of the candle. Now, if that's your starting point here, that means that candle, if you're on a totally buying day, could not look back and go 100 that way and likewise down. Okay, and if you don't know what the candles are, it is that, and that's the range, the top and the bottom. Simple, simple stuff. So what on earth has this got to do with a slice of bread then, big boy? What's that got to do with trend and counter trend? It's these bits here. Because when you've got a big ATR, they could be quite deep. You know? And if you can imagine it this way, well, it's going to take 100 pips, but that's an entire day, 24 hours. What if the market did this? Went up, pushed down, went up, 
pushed down, then went up. That, this section here, I'll just colour code that, from there to there could easily be 30 pips. So if you're only looking for 10, you can count a trend into that. That one could be 25 pips. Count a trend into it. So depending on how brave you are, or the time of day that you can trade, means that you can catch these. Because let's for argument's sake, you've seen me do it at the end of the night. You've seen me watch it push up. Well, what if that there is 5 p.m.? Or that there could be, say, 1 p.m. The only times I can trade. I can only go short because of time constraint. But that's deep enough for me to catch my trade in the limited time that I have. And I hope this kind of makes sense in a strange way. But why am I saying in the time that I have? Because it's a day trade and the trade is only expected to last 15 minutes to a couple of hours. Whereas a swing trade is a couple of days to a week. So if I'm doing that, I need this entire move over a week. I don't know what's happening tomorrow, so I've got to go with the dominant trend. But during the day, if these pullbacks are there, it can be pulling back for two or three hours. And those moves will be big enough to get your pips, which is what you need. However, if that ATR was down to 30, as with, say, Euro New Zealand, or one of the, the slower pairs, these pullbacks won't be as long. They won't be a couple of hours. They might only be sort of an hour and a half, hour maybe, and they'll be shallow. And it's the shallower part rather than the time that I'm more interested in. Because from there to there, might only be 10 pips. And if I'm looking to get 10 pips, the chances of getting the top and the bottom is pretty slim. Um, so in summary, I guess what I'm driving at is look at your ATR to determine the product. If it is high, then you can go either way during the day because you're looking to get in and you're looking to get out. If it is low, going against the trend is very dangerous. Well, it's not dangerous, it's just you're not going to get much of a reward. And the risk is greater because... If it does turn and it's going to go with the dominant trend, which inevitably it will, you're going to have a hard time getting out of it. Whereas when you've got a vicious pullback like this, because as you can see, that you might get in here, go down, go against you, but that might come back down and you can get out and break even. The pullbacks can help you get out. That's why the DAX is a great product. Even if you get it wrong, it retraces strong enough that you can get yourself out of trouble. But if you're on a very slow moving chart, you retrace and you can't. You've got to go with the, uh, the dominant trend. And the only way to work it out is look at your ATR, guys. So it was really just a, a little quick one. I just wanted to kind of answer a question that was posed. I'll revisit this, but I'll revisit it um, a little bit longer. I just wanted to give you a bit of food for thought when I saw it come in this morning. And by all means, drop questions below in the comments. It's really great to engage with you. And if you're stuck, by all means, contact me. I'm very easy found. All my contact details are in the description. But keep the train going. And our best advice Keep your trade simple. The simpler the better. Um, you'll start seeing the charts 
in a far better way. If you clutter it up with everything, you'll find you get yourself in a muddle. So there we go. Another one for today. See what tomorrow brings. So as always, guys, do what you love and the money will follow. See you all in the next one.